Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker, and um, I rise to speak to new clause 20 and also to the amendments uh, tabled in the name of my right honourable friend, the member for South Northamptonshire, and uh, very much uh, welcome the progress that's being made in today's legislation and very much welcome the fact that uh, the minister is the person responsible for taking it through, uh, given that he used to be one of my colleagues on the Treasury Select Committee and indeed is signatory to the report, which I think is on the table today in terms of economic crime that we put out uh, last year. And it is absolutely clear from the work that we've all done on economic crime how important the reform of Companies House is to achieving that. We've all heard horror stories of uh, people whose identities have been stolen, who have successfully set up businesses at Companies House. We've heard of people uh, who have shut down one business and then immediately uh, started up a, a one with a different name. Um, and uh, clearly, reform of Companies House, uh, as taken forward by uh, this important piece of legislation, is going to make uh, economic crime much more difficult in the United Kingdom, and I think that's something that everyone uh, should welcome. And in the report that the Treasury Committee put out last year on economic crime, uh, we called for uh, resources to be put into that uh, important work, and clearly it can't be done um, uh, without those resources. And it will be very interesting to hear from the Minister today at the dispatch box in terms of what his estimate is and his discussions with Companies House as to what resources are required. Because new clause 20 uh, says that there should be a fee for new businesses of £100 rising with inflation. And that, uh, I would submit, would give Companies House more resources to undertake this important work and, uh, importantly, keep their budget increasing along with inflation. Now, I do acknowledge that we do not want to have a fee that is set at a level that could act as a deterrent to anyone starting up a, a small business. Um, but the work that we did last year on the committee suggested that the current levels of fees benchmarked against international comparators are very low. And it is clear that we do need to have more resource uh, uh, in terms of uh, understanding the identity uh, of those who are establishing businesses in this country. And so we pulled a number out of thin air. I acknowledge that it was a number pulled out of thin air. I think we probably also got evidence recommending it, but a hundred pounds uh, I think uh, um, is a, a reasonable and plausible amount at which to start these discussions. And I know that the Minister is as keen as, uh, as those of us who've signed this amendment um, to see uh, a fee established that will uh, make sure that the, the regime at Companies House has sufficient resources to, uh, to, to manage uh, the budget. And uh, we know that the uh, software upgrades that are being undertaken do cost money, and it's really important, um, as we all experience rising economic crime in this country, uh, that we do everything we possibly can um, to make sure Companies House have the resources to undertake these, uh, this important work. And I give way to the Minister. Minister. Making um, some very valid points, as, as you would always expect, and it's a pleasure to respond to the Chair of the Select Committee. Um, reading the report, uh, which, as you say, is a signature too, um, it doesn't actually say we should adopt a fee of £100. I think it says a fee of £100 would not deter genuine entrepreneurs, which I absolutely agree with. And, as she says, it's kind of a figure out of thin air. I, I think it depends what principle you follow. Myself, and my position on this is you would, and the government's position, you'd follow the principle, the, the company's house needs to set out exactly what resources it needs to be able to perform the obligations to implement the objectives. And then from that we decide how much money we will need to raise, and then we'll look at the, at the, uh, the fees uh, that company's house charge. And I think many um, members on either side of the house haven't have looked at the re initial registration fee, the incorporation fee, rather than annual fees, which could raise more money than the actual incorporation fee. So I think it needs more work with Companies House and looking at this in the round before we come to a settled position on it. I'd rather not put it on the face of the bill for all those reasons. 
I'd like to thank uh, the Minister for giving way and uh, or for, for, for making his intervention. And I think what I heard him say was that he acknowledges that more resources are needed at Companies House. And I think what I heard him say was that he acknowledges that those resources should not just take the place of a one-off uh, uh, co cost to setting up a business, but also uh, ongoing uh, registration fees. And I think what I heard him say uh, was that he actually rather likes the way in which uh, we're proposing that those fees go up every every year in, uh, to, re to reflect uh, inflation. So I think uh, uh, he is uh, agreeing uh, in very uh, substantial part with the thesis of new clause 20. And the reason that it uh, is a great opportunity for the minister um, to uh, endorse this amendment and put it into the legislation is that it will mean uh, that there is the um, uh, ability for Companies House to start budgeting right away. Now, I did hear the Minister say, and I, and I do think it is a valid point, that he wants to uh, ensure that there is a, a budget worked from the bottom up, that this shouldn't be an arbitrary number um, just put, out, put into legislation. And I have sympathy for his point of view on that. But I do want him to be... Uh, uh, to understand just how urgent this is and I do uh, want him to appreciate that we have waited long enough uh, for uh, this action and this piece of legislation and I do want him to appreciate therefore that we will not in our committee allow this to be cooked to be kicked into the long grass, that we will continue uh, to scrutinise progress and we expect that progress to be urgent and rapid. Um, I'm, I'm very grateful to the Honourable Member, the Chair of the uh, uh, Treasury Select Committee, for giving way. Uh, does she not agree, though, two things? First of all, that actually, in, at this point in the cycle, I can't believe that there isn't a budget around as to what, yeah, exactly. um, as to, uh, what uh, resources, with, even, within, even within the, uh, the constraints of the legislation. That budget will be there, and it'll, the negotiations will be starting, so it would be interesting if the Minister could reveal that, but I don't believe there isn't a budget around. And the second point I would make, which she might agree with, is that we so under-resource the enforcement of yes. uh, existing AML regulations in this country that even were this uh, quite uh, this perfectly you know a figure of a hundred pounds which the select committee and other committees came up with even if that were proved to prove too much which I doubt but even if it would do so if we set up an economic crime fighting fund other agencies enforcement agencies like the NCA or the SFO could uh, use those resources to better uh, defend, uh, pro provide better defences against economic crime. Yes. The Right Honourable Lady makes some, some excellent points because it may well be the case that once the Minister does this piece of work that it turns out that £100 was uh, actually a very a very good starting point because uh, there, there are things that are uh, budgeted for. Uh, so, for example, uh, the work underway, I understand, is budgeted to cost £20 million pounds, uh, in the financial year just ended. Uh, a further £63 million is expected to be needed up to 2024 uh, 2025 and was allocated in the last spending review but forgive me if I am somewhat cynical about the budgets for public sector um, uh, computer procurement projects they sometimes come in uh, somewhat over those budgets and so uh, I, uh, I would urge the Minister in his response to uh, new clause uh, 20 to, uh, to, to make sure that he can uh, move swiftly um, to change uh, the amount that uh, it costs to set up a business while making sure that it remains uh, in a competitive position in terms of economic parameters. And it's not every day uh, that uh, we backbenchers uh, say to ministers, here's some more money for you. Uh, and uh, uh, and, uh, and, we, and we, think, uh, we think that this is uh, going to really make the UK a much safer and less uh, vulnerable centre for economic crime. Uh, and so uh, that is the purpose behind uh, our, our support for this amendment today. I give way. Thank you, Honourable Friend, for giving way. No, Isn't no, the no. point also that uh, if we raise the fees, then rather than it going to the general taxpayer, those that use the service would actually be paying? 
that, 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 that is my point. You know, that my my honourable friend has made it much better than, than, than I was making it, which is that this is an offer uh, to the Minister uh, for a significant increase in the, the budget of one of the agencies that he's responsible for, Companies House, which will be uh, feasible without putting any further burden on the hard-pressed taxpayer. So uh, that's why I support this <coughs> amendment, and that's why I'm looking forward to uh, the Minister uh, accepting the principle of it, uh, while I acknowledge that it may be plus or minus a few quid uh, around that £100, but that's a very good starting point. Uh, Cynthia Lewis. Uh, 